My body's ability to gain muscle and lose fat has improved massively, all because of one simple thing, meal prep. When starting a training program, people do just that. They focus on the exercise selection, the sets and the reps. But the truth is, the vast majority of your progress comes from something else entirely. It's nutrition. Think about it. If you can cook for yourself, eat healthy and nutritious food, as well as tracking your macros, you're going to make far more progress than the average gym bro who focuses on the training, but nothing else. Who's going to carry the pops and the logs? If you want to get into the best shape of your life and not lose your games, pay attention to this video. Cooking can change your life. Once you start to understand and master the basics, you can 10x your games. You eat healthier, you save time, and you save money, as well as learning six chefing skills. It's something I'm truly passionate about. But meal prep is boring, you might say, and time consuming. Wrong. Meal prep is wicked. It sets you up for the week. There's nothing more powerful than quality controlled nutrition except for maybe sleep. We need to change our perspective to streamline thinking. Consistency is key for your diet, health and mental bandwidth. The less decisions we need to make, the better. Warren Buffett had the same breakfast every day. Mark Zuckerberg wore the same gray t-shirt every day. Willpower is a limited resource. To speed up the time we spend in the kitchen, I've got a few culinary hacks, things I've learned from being a professional chef that will not only save you time and energy, but they'll also extract loads more flavor from food. And it's not just adding shitloads of butter like most chefs do, despite how delicious. But before we even think about cooking, we need to get some of the basics sorted first, which leads me on to my first point, hardware. The first thing we need is a good knife. Whenever I get a new recruit in the kitchen, we go through basic knife skills, learning how to look after and use your knife safely and efficiently before we even consider cooking. It's a bit like a Japanese sushi chef who spends years just washing rice before they're even allowed to move on to making the actual sushi but nowhere near as extreme. For any chef or any home cook, we need a good quality knife. And now you're probably thinking, I've already got a knife at home, but without even looking at it, I can already tell you the knife is a blunt piece of shit. Throw it away immediately. A good quality knife doesn't have to cost you a lot, but it will make a hell of a difference in the way you prepare food. Your cuts will be quicker, cleaner, and more efficient. We're not just trying to pile drive a blunt ass knife through a tomato. These are the knives I've used at home. This one costs 40 pounds, and I use it for everything. These ones are slightly older, but still sharp. That was 25 pounds and that was 70. I now like to think of myself as a samurai warrior looking after his knife. But anyway, in order to keep your knife sharp, we're going to need a steel. These can be bought cheaply. You'll need to spend five minutes trying to master it. It will take a little bit of time and it will feel unnatural, but here's a quick demonstration. Try to sharpen your knife before you begin any tasks and this will ensure your knife's longevity. Pans, chopping boards and utensils. I won't spend too much time on this one as it's pretty simple. You'll need a variety of pans, a few saucepans, a heavy bottom frying pan, and a wok. I pretty much use a wok for everything. A big wooden chopping board is great for all of your vegetable prep, and some plastic ones for meat. A general selection of utensils, a whisk, a spatula, tongs, and a fish slice will cover most things. If you have a bit of extra money, an air fryer can greatly speed up your cooking. The one I've got here is a Ninja, and it's wicked. I basically use it for everything. A little blender and a blitzer will also speed up a lot of tasks. The last thing we're going to need is decent Tupperware. The worst thing is making loads of tasty food while swallowing around trying to find all the top of containers and the lids. Why are there so many fucking lids? Why? It's infuriating. Make sure you get some decent Tupperware and try and keep it organized. Not like my hellhole of a cupboard. Spend a bit of time organizing it and it will save you loads of time in the future. Buy some good BPA free Tupperware, something like this I got from Amazon and it's perfect. Dishwasher friendly and large enough for all of my meals. Having the right tools will improve your life massively. I'm a bit of a cheapskate and I thought I could get away without having certain things. Cutting a few corners here and there, but it was just time wasting. Now we have the setup, next we need a bit of planning, recipes and chopping lists. The health and success of your body relies on planning and recipes. If I haven't got a list or a plan, I tend to go off piste, and this is where consistency fades. We can avoid this. We're going to need to have a few staples. Having a small bulk of staples around will make planning a meal prep easier. Instead of having to constantly go out and buy rice for pasta, just Success. having a few kilos around will make life a lot easier. So when we do go out shopping, it's not a constant battle of buying everything we need for one recipe, because we've already got a few of the core staples. It's just buying the select bits we need, like the protein. Stock pantry and spice shelf will do you wonders. Here's a list of things I recommend. I won't bore you by reading out everything I've got in my pantry and the things I recommend, but I'll post a little list up here on the screen, and I'll put a little list in the link down below, or the box down below. Um, whatever you want to call that little thing. But yeah, down there. A recent hack of mine is online food shopping. I never really used to do it because I thought it was too expensive, but the cost of everything is so much anymore, I don't think I'm gonna lose out much. It also saves me loads of time because I'm not faffing around, driving to the supermarket, wading through the hordes of the living dead. You know, the dawdlers, get the fuck out of the way. 
It just saves me a lot of mental pain, time and money. Those three hours I spend shopping and driving, it's time I can't get back. It's time I could use for something more important, like making these videos. Not having to drive to the supermarket saves me a lot of mental bandwidth as well as willpower, as I'm less likely to sneak in chocolate bars and any kind of junk food when I do online shopping. If you're in the UK, I've been using Ocado, I can get 10% cash back through complete savings, which is an extra win. So every time I spend hundred pounds a week or something on food, I get 10 pounds back. Literally free money, because it's money I was gonna spend anyway. We've nailed the hardware, got the ingredients and the plans. The next upgrade is taste. We need to learn how to extract incredible flavor from our food, and it can be quite simple. We've already spoken about the benefits of eating the same stuff week in, week out, so we can protect our willpower. However, it can be fucking boring. <laughs> chicken, rice and veg, chicken, rice and veg, chicken, rice and veg. All work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. We can avoid going full shining with a few life hacks. Let's talk about the basics. For us to cook banging meals, we need the following. Salt, fat, acid, and heat which is a cookbook by Samin Nosrat. Every chef and home cook should read the book to understand the concepts and how simple things such as acidity can totally change a recipe from bland to mind blowing. The book goes over the mastery of just four elements. Salt, which enhances flavor, fat, which delivers flavor and generates texture, acid, which balances flavor, and heat, which ultimately determines the texture of food and anything you cook will be delicious. Let's dive into it a little bit deeper and I'll offer you some real world applications so you can immediately make your food a little bit tastier. As any chef will tell you, salt is wicked. It instantly lifts the flavor of anything you cook. We're constantly checking our seasoning levels in the kitchen to avoid our friend that no one invited, Mr. Bland. Here's a little tip for you. Season your meat in advance. It allows the salt to diffuse through the meat evenly, providing a tastier piece of meat, helping break down the proteins, keeping moisture in, making it tender and juicy. Think about your Christmas turkey or your Thanksgiving turkey for my American friends. A lot of us brine the meat for that very reason. You could either season your steak 30 minutes before cooking, allowing it to get to room temperature, or for something big like a turkey, brine it for 24 hours to really let the salt penetrate the meat. Fat, fat is fucking delicious. It's what carries flavor. Think pork belly, butter, mayonnaise, or even some guacamole. Now fat does a lot of things. It also allows you to cook food at a higher temperature and extract different flavors compared to boiling or baking. Pan frying some new potatoes and a little bit of oil gives you that beautiful brown crust. The browning is what we're looking for and it's called the Maillard reaction, but we'll get into that shortly. Just a tiny amount of fat can add a huge amount of flavor. Just adding a few drops of something simple like toasted sesame seed oil will add a whole different complexity to a dish as well as adding nuttiness. Acidity. You can level up a lot of food with the addition of acid. A boring old salad is completely elevated with a zingy lemon dressing. Something like an oily mackerel can be lifted with pickled beetroot. A simple technique we can use at home is to coat some chicken in a spiced yogurt marinade. What this is gonna do is lock in extra flavor from the spices, break down the meat with the acidity of the yogurt and brown in the oven whilst cooking, getting us that Maillard reaction. It's going to be a juicy piece of meat, far better than cooking just a plain old chicken breast. Heat, without it, we can't cook. Think of the variety of flavors we can achieve from different cooking methods. Smoky barbecues, wood-fired pizza ovens, char-grilled steaks, deep frying, the list goes on. But as I mentioned those things, you can immediately conjure up the different tastes you get from the different cooking methods. And what we're going to achieve from these is that Maillard reaction. And that's the third time I've mentioned it. So let's talk about it. What is it? The Maillard reaction is an organic chemical reaction in which reducing sugars react with amino acids to form a complex mixture of compounds. This reaction is responsible for the characteristic flavor and aroma of brown food. The Maillard reaction is named after the French chemist, Louis Camille Maillard, and I'll probably butchered his name. We've leveled up the flavor. Now it's all about time management and how to cook efficiently and quickly. It doesn't have to be a laborious task that we hate each week. It can be fun, quick, and we're developing our chefing skills and improving each time. Whilst well, not to love, it's like leveling up your cooking stats in World of Warcraft, but with something actually useful. In the chef game, time management is crucial. Without it, we're fucked. Customers won't get their food on time, we'll run behind on prep, and it will be chaos. We can apply the chef's attitude to our meal prep. When following a recipe, it's not just a case of following it bit by bit. We need to break it down and work out how to do it efficiently. We need to think outside the box. Allow me to paint a bit of context for my job as a chef. When I start work, there's order. I check my prep list and I put away the orders. I put everything away as neatly as possible, knowing this will save me time and a little bit of diligence here will pay me back loads later. The temptation here, especially at home, is to fuck everything into the fridge and deal with it later. 
but that's only going to cause you issues. <laughs> we're better than that, so we're going to spend 10 to 15 minutes just putting everything away in a nice organized manner. This is going to save us plenty of time later. Once I've done that, I double check the prep list and I work out what's going to take me the longest to cook. Is it braising a lovely piece of meat or cutting the lemons? It's about making the most of your time. I know the braising of the beef is going to take me hours, so I'm going to do that first. I'll get that in the oven and that allows me free time. Whilst that's cooking, I can cut things like the lemons and I can prepare other garnishes. This is how we need to think in our home kitchen. Getting certain jobs done, freeing us up time so we can do the other bits whilst things are cooking. For example, say I've got three chicken dinners, meatballs and pasta, overnight oats and some vegetables to cook. I'll ask myself the question, in what order should I do this? Chicken will take the longest to cook. Whilst that's cooking, I'll boil the kettle. Next, I'll mold the meatballs and start frying them. As they're browning, I'll cook the pasta. That takes 12 minutes. On top of that, whilst we're dancing in between pans, I'll prepare the overnight oat and saute some vegetables, as these take the least amount of time. Everything else will tick over in the background. Setting timers allows for accuracy. Alexa is a lifesaver. If I have a spare bit of time whilst things cook, I prepare my Tupperware and start doing the dishes, loading the dishwasher as well. Work clean, tidy as you go. Don't just leave it all for later, otherwise you'll hate yourself. A final tip for time management is to lower your expectations. You can't expect to achieve everything in a day. You can't do the shopping, put everything away nicely, and then do the cooking. It's mentally exhausting. Simply putting everything away is enough to put me in a bad mood, and I'm in no frame of mind to do any cooking. <laughs> Break it down. Do it into different stages. Maybe do the buying of the food and putting it away in the morning, do a bit of cooking later, or simply do it on a different day. Generally speaking, most meals will last you a lot longer than you think. Three to four days on most things. A mixture of fresh and frozen meals will help you, but equally having some semi-prepared meals is wicked, especially when you're in a pinch. Having some pasta cooked off, adding some vegetables, smashing a tin of tuna in it is simple. At the time of the video, I'm down almost five kilos from 97 to 92, which is wicked. I've almost got visible abs now, and it's all due to meal prep. Meal prep is wicked. Do not ignore the power like I did for so many years.